365 days of horsemanship, day 119 and 120. Uh, as you can probably gather, this week has been or felt pretty busy. Yesterday, I did make it up in the daytime before I went to work, but I didn't have as long as I thought that I would have. And so I kind of ended up with like a short session again. I went to Lawrence first. And I did have um, actually a good amount of time with him. I really tried yesterday, having noticed the day before that I had been rushing him with this sulfur that I've been putting along his dorsal line. And so I really yesterday wanted to just try to take it a little bit more slowly um, and try to leave before he got concerned. It's so challenging though, when it's a job that has to be done because during the process, he just gets concerned so quickly and so easily. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of room for him to have tolerance. I definitely, I was definitely more happy with it yesterday than I had been the day before. Um, and it took me, you know, sort of the whole 20 minute session that we had. And I was happy with that. I was definitely happy to give it the time that it needed. Things didn't quite feel great yesterday um, with him. I didn't, I f it felt better than it had done a couple days before when I had initially realized that I'd been pushing him too fast or too far or too much into concern. Um, and it was impacting his trust. Um, so I definitely did a better job and felt better about it, but I didn't really feel that I was making the right choices or maybe that my timing wasn't very good. With Mia, I had a nice easy session. Um, I just went in and walked and went into flow when there was a focus change, like a category change from the grass to like literally anything else. Um, tried not to stay too long just for a couple of breaths and then got moving again. I just did that a couple times and left. Um, but today, um, I had a better day. I came up today, I've got the whole day off today, and I made myself come because what happened the day previously um, is that I had done all my other things that I wanted to do first with my day and then come for the horses just before work, which just doesn't work out because I always end up later than I think I'm going to be and I, I don't have as much time as I think I'm going to have. And I think that it maybe it's a priority problem for me where because I even though I put myself a lot of pressure on myself a lot of guilt on myself I still put the horses in the category of recreation and so for me I feel like I have to do all of the things that like need doing on my to-do list before I can allow myself to come and see the horses um and I think it's just it's it's a, a an ill ability to I think it comes under the self-care category I think is a running theme for me um, and I'm sure for a lot of us that we don't make enough time for self-care. We don't make enough time to prioritize the things that we really want to do and um, where it's difficult for us. I think it's very easy to say, oh, you don't make enough time, but actually I think it's difficult. It's difficult for me to prioritize that. Um, and so today I tried to push past that feeling, even though I'd had a kind of had a lazy morning, had a lay in, spent some time on social media, which is something I really want to just stop doing because it just sucks hours out of your day. Um, for like really hardly any reward at all. Um, but I'd had this lazy morning and I have some things on my list today, but I said, no, I'm gonna go for the horses first. Um, and I'm really happy that I did. And I think that's definitely, I think in order to get into a better frame of mind with it, um, I think I need to start prioritizing it more within my daily routine, I need to move it up the priority list. Um, and I think I'm going to have better results and I think I'm going to be happier. For sure. Um, so I came up today, you know, I had the whole day ahead of me. I've actually been here probably about an hour and a half. Which really just isn't that long. Like, you know, normally I'm here for like an hour or so. If I really rush, I can be done in under an hour. But 
So, you know, it really wasn't that much longer actually, but my mindset is so much better because of having like an exponential amount of time available to me and knowing I can just take as long as I need. I didn't really take that much longer than I usually would have, but I felt like I had more time. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be trying to schedule my horses earlier on in my daily routine, for sure. Um, so I came to Lawrence first. It was a challenging session today. It was really technically difficult session. Um, and I think I'm sort of understanding why it's been difficult with him recently today. Um, he has quite sensitive skin. Um, I've just started him on some new immune supplements. I'm really happy to see he had some like little scabs on his heels that he gets sometimes when his immune system is low and the sun reaction and everything. They're actually healing up quite nicely, which is really super. Um, but he's very bothered by all the flies and the midges. Um, and I think the thing is, is because he has this expectation of me that I'm gonna solve his problems because I have helped him so much in the past, that I think when he has concern, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of focus on me to resolve those problems. And I think there's this level of probably codependence in it as well. And so it was just a really challenging session because um, from the moment I arrived, he came to meet me and it was like, I'm itchy, I'm itchy, I'm itchy. And it was so, it, it was like I couldn't settle anywhere. It was like we couldn't have flow for any amount of time. He couldn't feel good for any amount of time. Like. I would do the pattern where I would scratch him a little bit. I would walk past him, come back around and scratch him a little bit again. Um, and I did that quite a few times. Um, and he started to feel better about me itching that specific spot, but that only would last for like a few minutes. And then I, and then he would get frustrated by something else. There'd be a moment of concern about a fly somewhere else on his body. And then he'd want, uh, and then I'd want to leave again and go back into supportive leadership rather than staying in flow because I don't want to be flowing with concern. Um, I think as well with the itching pattern, it's not something that I've really practiced a lot. I know Elsa has talked about it and I've seen the theory, um, but I think that sort of halfway through I realized there was part of it, part of the pattern that I was really missing, which was the aspect of um, when I'm itching when I'm scratching him, I need to scratch him until the best possible moment. I think I was just sort of scratching him for an arbitrary amount of time and then leaving and coming straight back. But I think I need to scratch him until he feels better, then leave before he feels worse. Um, so that's just something I think I need to learn how to read better. I think I need to stay a little bit longer so that I can observe the moment when he moves from feeling better to feeling worse um, and observe what happens kind of just before that because that's the moment that's the best possible moment. So that was a good learning experience. Um, I then decided after kind of playing around with this for some time and you know, then there's his, his friend is in the field as well and they have a good relationship, but you know, his friend is irritated too and he's trying to get, he was quite interesting like, He'll go and stand kind of like in an L shape with his friend's tail right next to his face. So then while his friend's tail is swishing, it's like swishing the flies away from his face, which I think is a very smart move and a smart way of positioning, but it, it doesn't really last very long before the other horse gets kind of annoyed with him or wants him to be somewhere else. So it was a lot of movement, excuse me, it was a lot of movement. It was a lot of, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And so I went um, to get some fly spray. I actually used um, some fly like gel on a sponge um, because I knew the spray was gonna be a whole nother ball game. Um, and then started the game like I had with the sulfur of, um, cause I could see he's got quite a lot of sulfur still around his dorsal line. I don't think he needs a reapplication today. Um, but I could see that these flies are really bothering him. Um, and so I started with the sponge and actually I think this is maybe something else that I like had missed the obvious. I started at his, um, hind end and starting at his hind end actually was really helpful because he just was not as concerned about it as he was about his face. And 
while I'm kind of playing this game, I'm just trying to like wipe him a little with the sponge and then walk away before it gets worse and come back and start again. Like my timing wasn't always perfect. Sometimes I missed it and then he would already start to be concerned when I started walking. But you know, it's a learning process. You can only learn how to have better timing by having bad timing and then realizing that you've had bad timing. Um, so I was all kind of going okay. And while I'm doing this pattern, I'm kind of, a few things are kind of coming into my head. I think the first one that I think is maybe not just me, um, how many of you can honestly say that your horse is fully comfortable with you touching their face for no reason? Because this is something that I kind of noticed a while ago with Lawrence, that he's just not often very comfortable with me just having my hands on his face. Like if I'm scratching him, that's fine. But if I put my hands near his face, he either immediately wants him to scratch him, wants me to scratch him, or he wants me to move away. And while I'm realizing this, I'm thinking, you know, this is a real piece of the foundation that's like very missed. And I think this is the case for a lot of horses, because then it's like, if you're only ever touching the, ho the horse's face to do something uncomfortable, like putting a funny smelling spray on or putting a bridle on or putting a halter on or a head collar or something happening, like the vets coming and so you're holding them really hard by their face because so that they don't move away or whatever, um, or to control them for any other reason then it's not that surprising that they don't have a very good relationship with their face being touched. And it's not very surprising that all of these things are then difficult. And you know, with horses that are head shy. I think head shy doesn't only come from people smacking their horses around the face, which I think is a thing that unfortunately happens. Um, I think I like to hope that it happens less than I am worried that it happens. Um, it's definitely something that I know, you know, has happened to horses in the past. I think when I first had Lawrence, he was very head shy. And I think some of that was to do with him having some aggression around his face. Um, but I think actually a lot of it is, is more to do with simply having no positive associations and having no comfort or trust around being touched in that place. Um, so that was something that I really noticed that I thought, okay, I've really got to work on this. Me being able to touch his face is a thing that is very important for us to be able to do. Um, and then the other thing that I was thinking about whilst I was doing this is actually just how much I've pushed him into concern. And then he's not really felt better afterwards. He's learned how to make the pressure go away. But I think him learning to feel better whilst doing something it is something it is not something that's happened to him very often in his life and i think that's something that could go for all of the dominance training that i've done with him um although i wouldn't say i've done you know a terrible job i definitely think that now i'm looking at this with new eyes um and i'm realizing just how much that's happened um elsa talks about like the relationship bank account i don't think she's the only person who talks about that but um, if we're talking about the relationship bank account, I think, again, it's another really interesting thing with these older horses that have trauma, which is definitely the case with both Mia and Lawrence. And like today, you know, I've had these realizations. I want to work from a better place. I want to like be able to help him to not feel concerned. I'm really concentrating on my timing to try to make that happen. But there's like no, there's no money in the bank. It's like, he's not got it. I, like I'm saying to him, oh, can we spend some money? Can you trust me for a minute that this is gonna be okay? And then I, I promise I'll leave before it gets worse. But it's like, there's not like, it's like I'm already in debt. Like every question I'm asking, I'm already in debt. I'm, he's already like, mm, no, mm, no. Like it, there's no, there's a very small amount of allowance for it. And it like makes the journey like super duper slow. Um, I mean, the obvious answer to that is that I'm just still pushing too hard. And the sooner that I stop pushing, the faster it'll go. Um, but it's very difficult when you're working with something that you feel needs to be done. Like, you know, when I'm putting this spray on or whatever. Um, I guess there's a level of that that I also just need to let go of because ultimately you know, I didn't put fly gel on him yesterday or the day before or the day before that. Like, he doesn't need it. Um, 
So actually maybe it is okay for me to just work with it really slowly. Um, you know, just because I think that he needs it on today and I want him to have it on today and I, I want him to be in a place where he's like, okay, I can have it on. And I like want to prove to him it's going to be okay. It's not going to feel okay if he wasn't comfortable with it being put on in the first place. So I think it's just about like me thinking something's a good idea for him, wanting to prove that to him, it, it, it's not everything. Like it, it's also got to feel good to him and it's up to him to make that decision. It's not up to me to, to, to say to him, well, you're going to do this and you're going to feel better afterwards. So I'm going to like push you to do it. Like that's not, that's like a, the backwards, <laughs> it's like backwards, you know, I feel like that's the right thing to do or what I want to do at the time, but actually it doesn't work out. So it was good. It was a good day um, from that perspective. With Mia, um, oh, it was so nice. To be honest, it was so nice. After this like really just challenging session with Lawrence where it was just really full on, I was concentrating so hard and I felt like every minute there was an opportunity for me to have bad timing. Um, it was such a relief to go and play with Mia and just play with something so simple where I'm just walking until I get a big category change and that's it. And I can just walk and walk and walk and walk and it doesn't matter. And when I see that big change and I can just do my big and be in flow for a few breaths and then move on. Um, I came in, she looked up at me, I was able to start and be in flow with her for a couple of breaths and I was walking for quite a long time um, until I got the next one. The next one I got was actually as I walked up to her at touching distance, which was really nice. And she kind of said hello to me and I was able to flow with her then. Um, I think I had trouble maybe when she was first connected with me. I think I was still in that like slightly detached state of like waiting to then have to move again. So I didn't quite engage with her as much as I'd have liked to. Um, but I did then, I was then able to go into flow with her after that for a couple of breaths uh, my timing wasn't so great on that one she was already kind of moving away as i was moving away but it was okay it was okay um walked for a long time again um and got another focus change uh to the environment where i was able to stay with her for quite a few breaths um i would say six or seven breaths i was able to just stay with her and she didn't change my position i was still at her right hind um and yeah and so at that point i decided that was that was a good moment to finish um i definitely was walking for quite a while but it was okay um and i think that um one something that i've discovered that i'm now doing to help me with the like boredom i guess of doing the same thing for a long time um is i've started using it as kind of like a workout for myself of like practicing my own walking and my posture, really engaging my muscles. Um, and I started experimenting with like walking backwards and like walking sideways and like lateral movements, things like that. Um, and it's, been, it's brought up some interesting, some interesting ideas about how we ask horses for lateral movements. And I think just doing those movements myself was really interesting seeing, you know, like what kind of movement I'm asking the horse for, I think might improve my feel as well. Um, so I'll see how that goes. Um, I'll definitely catch up with you guys in more detail about that later um, and in, in a later vlog. I can see I've been talking for some time now, so I'm gonna, gonna finish this off now. But it was a good day. It was a good day. I'm looking forward to a similar day tomorrow with a nice amount of time. Looking forward to playing with Lawrence tomorrow and just trying at all costs to avoid concern.